right, in the spirit of expediency, we're going to try another scene. I don't think I'm going to go for that five minute mark, but we'll see if uh, 10 minutes is in the card. We're going to use nature set number 10 here. And let's see how this one goes. Okay, stamping the curvilinear road as kind of my foundation piece right here. I'm stamping it on a brown because so this one's going to be kind of in the spirit of a, like a sepia print or something of that sort. We could stamp these in black if you want to. It's going to have more contrast. But I want to go for kind of more of a, you know, kind of a aged, washed out look. Okay. All right, so I'm going to mask off this road. You don't need a super, you know, carefully cut mask. This is just a rip paper towel. There's a little doorway on the uh, uh, chapel. I'm going to put my finger right in that area that is, and I'm going to aim that road kind of leading up right to that doorway, or kind of within the vicinity at least, okay? I'm under masking a little bit and stamping this down so that it goes into the road or, you know, it's supposed to look like it's behind the road, okay? Like that, okay? No careful masking needed, and yes, it is easy. Well, you don't have to do kind of more, I don't know, tedious types of processes, i.e. cutting out masks and whatnot. You could cut out a mask if you want to, and kind of do that, um, or, you know, you can make masks out of whatever. Okay, so, uh, this is my trees on both sides. See how this road comes down here? I'm not going to block off the trees down here, but see how this is kind of curving around like so? Why don't I put some trees like this, okay? There we go. It is right down that way. Visual lead-in. Okay, easy enough, right? Let's go with the sun back here. I don't know, how much masking did we do here? You know, barely any, right? Rip paper towel. I didn't pre-rip the paper towel in accordance with that road either. It just, that's how it ripped. Okay. Sky figures, you kind of blot off the edge like this. You don't, you know, don't be too delicate. Don't go like this, you know, but blot it off pretty good. And that will fade out the edges meaning it'll fade into the um, surrounding area, making it easier to blend in when we end up blending it in, okay? Place it wherever you want to. I'm stamping right over my trees. You know, it's not as if the, uh, you know, the sun's gonna look like it's in front of that tree right there. That over there, we'll just blend in with tone. Okay, so, um, get that out of the way. That is it for the impressions. The sedge filler also comes with that in case we need to fill it out around the edges a little bit more. All right, so toning. We have a paper towel right here. We have our um, Distress Ink Antique Linen. Okay. I could use my pad. I think it's easier just to use the reinker. I didn't have to use the pad, but um, you know, just to uh, you know make it visual. Actually, this one's the... Uh, pad case, or the lid case for the, uh, or the lid for my uh, walnut stain here, okay? But antique linen is being used here, okay? There's the cloud with sun there, so if I want that sun to kind of be, or to be, the illuminating source of light within the scene, what I do is I bring tone around it, okay? You can bring a little bit of light tone into it too, but leave the, the leave that sun kind of light to represent light. Okay. Now I'm not doing uh, green grass and uh, you know white uh, chapel or anything like that. It's just going to be kind of a general tone. You know that's this the fastest way to do um, a scene is to kind of do a monochromatic, but it can be very rich in um, value changes of intensity temperature, etc., you know, without going into four to five different color uh, hues, okay? Although that's fun to do too, okay? All right, now I'm just doing this in a kind of a warmer tinge tone type of situation. That was a few drops of um, antique linen distress ink, and it just makes the process go really fast, okay? Here's walnut stain. You know we're done with that base coat there. There's the walnut stain there. Now on this one right here, 
it's not too much darker than the antique linen. I mean, it's it's definitely a value jump. But on this one right here, what I might do is I might stay a little bit more on the perimeter. Well, I guess I'm not perimeter oriented, but I might not do as much coverage as I did with the lighter color. Okay, the lighter color covers more. And this one, when I start moving up into my darker tones, I kind of start focusing in a little bit more on things like shadows or you know, something like that. Um, specific areas on the chapel. Maybe I'll do the vertical sides of it. See by making that chapel a little bit darker on that side, it makes the chapel seem more three-dimensional. Um, underneath the trees here, it gives the trees more visual weight and it kind of anchors them into the scene. Putting this around on the perimeter out here, okay. The darker you make your area around your sun, you don't have to go right up to the sun, okay. You can do it right over here on the corner. And making that corner darker makes that seem lighter by contrast. See this in my road, the curvilinear road, it's darker kind of at the base of the road or the, you know, the base of the uh, slope of the grass where it meets the road. So I'm just darkening it with this color. Okay? So you just observe the imagery and the darker the imagery, the more ink you can apply when toning and shading. All right, so that's getting there. All right, now I stamped everything out in a dark brown. Let's go back to that dark brown, and let's use that to incorporate the scene a little bit more. So these other colors are, they're certainly coloring and shading and whatnot, but when you get back to that same color that you stamped your imagery out in, or the darkest color that you did, that's when everything kind of comes together a little bit more, okay, or a lot more in some cases. I don't know about you, but I'm thinking this looks okay, and I think it looks aged enough, but I think that this will benefit from kind of warming up a little bit more. What do you think? Let's try, oh, I don't even know what this, this mustard seed is pretty bright, so I need to be careful about that, but let's give that a try. I'm just using a clean part of my paper towel here, okay? Wipe that off. That's pretty bright there, okay? Let's knock it down a little bit like that, okay? It's easy to use a very dry application of something because you're barely applying any of it. It takes several different passes just for it to even show, but look how much warmth and kind of, uh, I don't know, atmosphere that gives to it, okay? If there's a sun or if there's a source of light within a scene shining on something, it usually reflects on the things that it's illuminating, right? So you bring that same warmth down into your road, or you just the you know the terrain. Okay. Say something like that. All right. Now I'm going to I. I'm of the mind to make things quite a bit darker because I usually do just to push kind of the visual impact a little bit more, but um, I think I just toned in with that. I was going to, going to go in with a dark brown. Um, I, I don't want to go too dark on this one because, again, I want things to look a little bit more kind of antiqued. All right, now I went with a lot of the yellow down there just uh, which is a mistake, so I'm just going to go over it here with some more of this dark brown. Okay, we're at about the 10 minute mark, so things are going reasonably quick. Okay, that's not too bad in terms of the time frame for getting the entire composition and almost being done with all the coloring. All right, let's get a few more streaks up in the sky. Let's go like up here, then let's come down here a little bit to leave that kind of striation in there. It adds a little bit more atmosphere being streaky, right? Don't fear the streak, okay? 
don't fear kind of handmade marks within your pieces. That's what gives them the character and uh, whatnot. A lot of people kind of, I don't know, because of postings or something like that and saying, oh, I, you know, I got a streak with my Copic markers or something like that. It's kind of put the value on kind of valuing kind of like mechanical kind of reproduction over hand done artistry, okay? You don't need to kind of try to replicate um, kind of machine made applications of media, you know, where things are completely smooth, like a like a computer, okay? We want brush marks, people value, you know, the French impressionists like and go specifically because of all those brush marks, you know. Those are usually more sought after in fine art than, say, I don't know, you know, computer animated uh, print of something. Okay, so there we go. What was that about? Yeah, it's about four colors or so. Three distress inks and a black. Oh, or, or brown, I should say. Okay, now let's head in some. I, I don't like to skip anything, even when I'm going for um, kind of quick applications of things like that. So let's go for some brilliance. Uh, moonlight white here to just kind of add a real soft look to things and to really push our um, kinesthetic um, types of uh, ranges within the piece, okay? And this is a great way to do it, just adding thin layers of media, in this case white, into certain areas. So I'm adding it in the lighter area to begin with, okay? And see how that really kind of softened up that area. Look at that soft light on those trees, okay? I'm going to soften up some areas down here. Let's say it, it just kind of adds a little bit of atmosphere into the scene. I do it where light meets darker. It doesn't mean where light meets black or something like that, but it just, I add it in those lighter areas because this represents moisture in the air kind of being illuminated by light. So you wouldn't add it in kind of darker areas, you know, you'd add it in the lighter areas because that's where the light is hitting that moisture or dust in the air. All right, so kind of that adds kind of a nice little atmosphere to it. See it down here? It kind of creates continuity between sky and ground. All right, now let's add some little, I don't know what this would be in the ground. It would probably be, you know, during, more in the spring or something like that. But let's go ahead and let's add little white wildflowers or whatever down here. Clover, pearly, everlasting, I don't know, whatever it might be. What I usually like to do is I usually like to uh, kind of cluster things a little bit like this. So I'll bring it over here and do a little cluster of flowers as well. And it adds just kind of a nice little touch down here in the, the road. It might not represent flowers, but just kind of a little bit of texture on the road or light, kind of added in the lighter area again. Pebbles, you know, I might, I might add something down in that area here. I haven't had my little rock stamp here. Um, okay, let's go and break out here a little bit. This is tiny rocks. I'm just kind of layering some additional texture in that area. Uh, going for multiple impressions, easy enough. All right. Now, I always say, you know, bleed proof white, it represents snow, it represents stars. It could just be pollen in the air, okay? But this is a quick scene, so if you want to really go for kind of a quick application of an instant um, kind of textural layer or textural change sometime too, you can go just kind of splatter paint over, you know, a given surface. 
I don't know what it would represent in here. You know, there's um, kind of blossoms in the sky. Remember, this is supposed to be just kind of, it's not supposed to be like um, fall, or it could be, but it could just represent kind of like a more kind of antiqued print here. This could be a little dust in the air, something like that. But I like it just as a textural type of, I don't know, addition. It's a layer in here, okay? I'm not going to go too much. I'm just kind of putting a few little flakes in here, and it could represent pollen or something like that in the air. Dust being illuminated. I don't know. Generally what I say, if it looks good, I don't care, you know, what it, what it is. Um, you could illuminate some of them. Maybe they're, you know, you know, fire bugs or whatever. But there you go. Okay, so we're at 16 minutes. Not too bad for having a lot of different depth, lighting, texture, composition, um, whatever, shading. And uh, I don't know. We didn't really... You know, it's not three different hues in here, you know, uh, green grass, blue sky, um, different color chapel or whatnot, all kind of tied together or whatnot, green trees, okay? You know, that, that, you know, that'll take a little bit more time just in terms of the, you know, the actual mechanics of coloring or whatnot and changing pad colors, but kind of everything in, is in here in terms of the visual statement, in terms of, you know, what we might include in a scene, you know, in terms of background, mid-ground, foreground, lighting, um, texture, soft and um, sharp, another layer with the uh, bleed-proof white and whatnot, but easy, to, easy done. Okay, so that was about a 15-minute scene right there, and uh, not too bad. I think that's completely reasonable in terms of a quick scene, not the quickest scene, Quickest scene might be doing photo stamping where the background is already set, you know, clouds or brayering, something like that. I still think I could do a pretty fast uh, um, five-minute card, you know. I'm not quite sure if I could do the, uh, have enough time for like the, uh, you know, the white pigment ink and whatnot in there. We'll have to try it sometime. Or just maybe do a brayered blue background or stamping on, certainly stamping on um, colored paper or something like that where that's already established. But that's not too bad in terms of um, color transitions and shadows and whatnot in this type of time frame right here. Okay, so anyways, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed, uh, if, you, if you stamped along with me, stamping along with me in this quick scene. Um, and uh, let's see. Enjoying nature set number 10 for whoever has it here. But you can always use these kind of fundamentals with any scene that you do. These, this, you know, color application and whatnot wasn't specific to this um, grouping of images. Okay, thanks again for watching.